Hi, this is Anita from the Global Trade Gal. If any of you have been listening to my podcast, you would maybe know that I am a fan of Apple products. So you might be a little surprised today about my podcast, what I'm going to talk about. But if you are like me and you're in a place like Vietnam, where we don't have an Apple store, because I want to point out, first of all, here at the beginning, anytime there's an Apple store, I find Apple service is usually great. Whether it's in Hong Kong, whether it's in Taiwan. In fact, yesterday I was talking to a friend of mine in Taiwan. She said, the service here in our Taiwan store is great. Yes, where there's an Apple store, there's great service. But Apple doesn't have stores everywhere. So they depend upon these third-party people to help them handle repair and other things. Let me go back and tell my story. The other day, I looked down at my Apple Watch, and I know that I'd moved throughout the day, and my watch said I'd taken no steps, and there was no heart rate. I thought, well, that's not true. I know I'm not dead, and I know I've taken some steps and done some exercise. So I called up Apple in the United States. I first checked my app. First, I went online, and I did all the different things that people say you do. Try to you know, reset your watch up, clean your watch, all these other things. Nothing worked. So I went online to check my Apple account, and I saw that, oh, my Apple Watch is still under Apple Plus. I've got the Apple, you know, Apple Plus or the Apple Care. So I called up Apple in the United States, which is where I purchased all my Apple products. And I said to them, my watch has a problem. So he says, well, let me test. He said, yeah, you're correct. Your sensors are broken. Your sensors have a problem. So I said, okay, so can we set up a repair? Sure, let's set up a repair for it. Here are four places you can go in Hanoi, four different companies you can go in Hanoi, and you can turn in your Apple Watch for them to be able to repair it. So I you know, checked with my staff. I said, which one would be the easiest? She said, oh, this one, which was a company called Cares. Go there, their you know, location's not too far, and it wouldn't be too hard to get there. Okay, fine. So we'll go there and we'll turn it in. So I thought, you know, everything's pretty much done. I have an Apple repair number. Apple's already confirmed to repair my watch. Everything should be set. I should be able to turn it in and get it repaired. Not so easy. So we go there, try to turn in the watch. And they said, sorry, we can't accept your watch because we don't know if you purchased your watch. And I said, what do you mean you don't know if I purchased the watch? I've already talked to Apple in the United States. And Apple's already, you know, completely agreed and said, look, you know, this is the person who said they are. They purchased this watch. They have Apple Care. And here's the, here's the number for their, you know, for their care service. No, nope. sent me back with it. And we need to have your original receipt. And we need to have your passport copy. And all these other things they had to have. I call Apple back again. Apple. What am I supposed to do? I need to copy the receipt. Well, you can only get the receipt from the original Apple store. So then I spent another hour or two on the phone with this other Apple guy in the United States. And he's like, well, I don't know why this is a problem because, you know, your case number already shows that you purchased it. And the number of your device shows that you have Apple Care, So it shouldn't be this huge problem. Well, maybe I'll try to call the local Vietnam number and talk to a local Vietnamese person. I call the local Vietnam number, but because I'm an English speaker, they send me over to the Philippines. So then I'm talking to somebody in the Philippines. No idea, has absolutely no idea at all about Vietnam, anything about Vietnam. She said, and I said to her, look, under my Apple Care, I have Apple Express. Why don't I try to do the Express? If I can't turn this into the Apple service itself, let me try to do, try to do the Express, fine. So she sets up for me to get Apple Express. I get the email and I said, but this email's in Vietnamese. Can you send me the email in English? No, we don't have the email in English. I said, fine. So all the forms and everything's going to be in Vietnamese. Yes, you have to fill it out in Vietnamese. I said, well, I don't speak Vietnamese, so I'll have to have somebody help me. So I wait for the next day. I wait for my, my staff, for them to help me. We fill out the forms. We go through all the addresses. Then it comes time 
where you have to pay. You have to put down a deposit on the watch in case you don't return the watch, then Apple will keep the deposit. Well, I, you know, put in my credit card and then I say, wait, but it only allows me to put in a Vietnamese credit card. So I call Apple again. Why is it you only allow me to put in a Vietnamese credit card? I have a Vietnamese address here, but I want to use a U.S. credit card to be able to secure the payment on this. Nope, you can't do that. You have to only have a Vietnamese credit card. And then the girl there starts saying things like, well, why don't you borrow someone else's credit card? Why don't you borrow somebody else's watch? What, you know, I'm just kind of going like, really? Like, this is your advice to me? Like, why can't you as Apple, number one, you're such a big organization, certainly you have to have other foreigners that are living and working overseas in these places that need to have a repair. First of all, can't you put it in English and another language? And can't you allow credit cards from another place? Because a credit card should be a credit card. No, we can't allow that. Our system doesn't allow it. So then, uh, here I am. I'm stuck again. Can't use Apple Express. Can't use Apple Care. Got to go back again to the, to the care service there and turn this into them again. So then I have to find my receipt from Apple. And I finally find my receipt from Apple, give them a copy of my passport. They take my watch. But they say it's going to take between two to three weeks to be able to replace my Apple Watch. Now, I mention this because this just shows that even though Apple service in America is great, if I was in America and if I was going home, I would have just waited until I was going home to the States, but I'm not going home for a couple months until the fall. You know, I would have just walked into the Apple store. I would have said, here's my watch. I've got Apple Care. They would have checked it out. We would have dealt with it. And I would have been sent off with the replacement watch. And it would have been simple and extremely easy. If I was in Hong Kong or if I was in Taiwan where there's an Apple store, would have been very easy too. Would have walked into the Apple store, had about the same thing. But the minute you go outside the scope of Apple's normal service with their Apple stores, Apple's service actually really sucks. Now, I'm not just saying this because of the experience with my Apple Watch, but last summer I had the same thing with my iPad Pro. My iPad Pro broke. It stopped recharging. I turned it in to one of these other third service providers again. It took me 45 days. I'm not kidding you. 45 days for them to replace my iPad Pro. 45 days. Huge amount of time. Imagine if you're visiting here for a month and you need to do this. It's almost impossible. There was no type of express service. It was 45 days. Then to top it off, when I did get back to the United States and I had an iPad Pro that had the uh, Wi-Fi with it and a SIM card, I changed to my US T-Mobile SIM card. I put in my T-Mobile SIM card and I kept saying, it's not working. I kept going back to T-Mobile and saying, you keep giving me these cards that are not working. They're not working. Finally, T-Mobile said, let's test the card. And they said, the problem is not the card. The problem is your iPad. So then I went back to the Apple store again. And they said, oh my goodness. When they replaced your iPad, they replaced it with an Asia-based iPad, even though I specifically told them, after waiting 45 days, I need exactly the same iPad. That Asian-based iPad does not have Wi-Fi, which works in the United States. That is why I say, when you get away from the Apple care system within Apple's own stores, Apple service can actually pretty much suck overseas. But Apple in the U.S., I will say, they immediately found a way to deal with it and they, re they were able to replace my iPad and do it. That part of Apple is great. But when it comes to these third-party people that they are using in these other countries, it can actually be a horrendous experience. 
it just really shows me that even a company like Apple is not getting it right when it comes to these things, that they are not properly vetting their third-party services, which are using their Apple name, which is even on their Apple system itself. The Apple people in the U.S. even had no idea that I would need to have my original receipt for my watch or I'd have to have my passport or anything like this. They have no idea about any of this, what's needed. So I sort of blame Apple for this because this is Apple not doing their job when it comes to using the third party local service. Somebody there at Apple is not vetting these people and not making sure that these people are giving the exact same type of service and are giving good quality service as people have expected from Apple in the United States or Hong Kong or Singapore or Taiwan or any place there's an Apple store. So it shows that even Apple themselves do not always get it right. You know, that at a company as big as Apple can even make a basic business mistake like this by not protecting their brand and ensuring that the, the third-party services they're using are protecting the Apple brand. If you'd like to be able to read more about this, I've written a blog called Apple's Overseas Service Sucks, Even Apple Gets It Wrong. I'll put a link in the description for you to be able to read it and to read about some of my own personal experiences here and what has happened to me and why I say that even Apple, that's a great company and I love Apple products, I have nothing against Apple, but even how they have gotten it wrong when it comes to them working with these third-party services overseas in these countries where they do not have an Apple presence or an Apple store. Thank you so much for listening to our podcast. If you have any questions or comments, please let us know. We'd love to have you be part of our community. Mm-hmm.